couple of questions on the debt limit. Uh, there's a, there was a change of venue today for the talks. The negotiators are here. Can you uh, tell us if the president perhaps might have dropped in? Um, and why are the negotiators meeting here versus Capitol Hill, where they've been meeting since the beginning? So as you know, as you just stated, Darlene, they've been meeting for since the beginning. Uh, at, at, on Capitol Hill. We truly appreciate uh, the Speaker's hospitality uh, for those uh, important uh, negotiation, budget negotiations, and we tell, we just felt it was time uh, for a change. Uh, I wouldn't read too much into the change of venue, uh, but we are glad to uh, be hosting uh, the negotiators here. Uh, just to add a little bit more uh, color, it, uh, it's happening in the OMB offices uh, at EOB, which is just on the other side of, of West Exec. And uh, it started around uh, noon today, and it's still continuing. That, but I think a lot of Americans don't understand what's going to happen practically. Can you help us understand that? So look, here's the thing. This is why we have said uh, this is would be catastrophic to our economy. If there is a default, we've been very clear. We've laid out what could potentially happen. Remember, this would be our first ever default. If it were to happen, we were going to do everything that we can to avoid this. That's why we've been asking for Congress uh, to act. But a couple of things that we would that this would lead to, it would wipe out millions of jobs, up to 8 million jobs. Uh, it would trigger a recession. Uh, it would devastate retirement accounts. It would increase costs. It would damage our international reputation. This is what could potentially happen if we default. default. Again, we are not a deadbeat nation. That's what the president has said. We have been able to pay our debts since 1960. We did it 78 times. So, And that's just one part of what could happen. The other part that what could happen, too, is we could see the, the gains that we have made these last two years under this president. When you think about 12.7 million jobs, that could be gone. When you think about unemployment rate at the lowest, at one of the lowest that we have seen, 3.4 percent, that could hurt that. The manufacturing boom, the 80,000 new jobs that we were able to create, with manufacturing jobs, that could be gone. The $1.7 trillion of deficit that the president was able to do the first two years, a record, that could be all gone. So that is what's at stake. And I believe if we believe the Americans, the American people understand that, and so we're going to do everything that we can uh, to to make sure that that doesn't happen. And just one more on the negotiations. McCarthy has made very clear what Republicans are asking for. The White House has made clear where President Biden is willing to meet them halfway. But what concessions are the White House trying to get in this deal? In other words, what are you going to get out of this deal? other than raising the debt ceiling. So look, a couple of things, and I've said this, I think I said this yesterday, the President said this on Sunday, uh, Not certainly not going to negotiate from here, but I'll lay out a couple of things that the President has been very clear. Uh, we put forward a proposal that cuts spending by uh, more than $1 trillion. That's on top of what the President put in his budget on March 9th, uh, which, is, uh, which is a $3 trillion cut in deficit over 10 years. And the President has made clear that uh, he and congressional Democrats cannot support devastating cuts that would slash uh, in law enforcement, education, and food assistance. So we've been very clear on those pieces. We've said this over and over again. Can Just I also ask you um, about the, I mean, essentially the lack of a significant market reaction to these talks. There are analysts uh, out there who, who feel that a market reaction could actually serve as kind of a forcing mechanism to move the sides closer together. Ha my, my question is, has the lack of a market activity maybe hurt your efforts, maybe hurt the White House's bargaining position, negotiating position? So I'll say this, i got to be very careful as we're talking about the markets here. I'm not going to speak about the markets reacting or moving. That is not something I'm going to do from here. What I know and what we believe is that the American people, they understand what's going on. They understand what's at stake. And so what we are going to do is focus on them. That is the most important thing here, making sure that American families uh, get what they need, right, to make the ends meet as they think about as they think about what is it that there is needed in their household, right? Having those conversations, those really important conversations that many American families have uh, almost every month, 
some some of them even more. And so that is our focus. We know, we know, I just, I just read out what could potentially happen. What could potentially happen if we default? Millions of jobs, you know, trigger a recession. We can't allow that to happen. This is why we're uh, continuing uh, to have these conversations, why the president has been very firm on how Congress needs to do their job and deal with the debt limit. But isn't the lack of a reaction uh, representative that, that Americans aren't as concerned as to the things I'm that you're laying speak. out? I, I, should that, does I, that hurt I appreciate you? the question. I'm just not going to speak uh, to the market. That is not something I'm going to do from here, from this podium. And what I'm going to speak to is what we're going to do, what we know uh, would be catastrophic to our economy, what would be catastrophic to American families. And that's why the president has been very, very clear on this. He has held the line on this for a couple of months, which is Congress needs to act. We need They need to deal with the debt limit, just like they have done 78 times since 1960. Great. Ms. Green, um, I was just talking about what Republicans have said about your negotiators. Can you characterize how you guys feel about Congressman McHenry and Graves and how they've been negotiating up to this point? Look, what I can say is that the negotiations have been productive, which is what matters. The conversations continue, which is what matters. And the focus is on what uh, what the leaders said themselves, what Speaker McCarthy and what the President said as well, which is uh, the fault is off the table. We're going to continue to negotiate in good faith. And if that is what occurs, then we can get to a bipartisan, reasonable, uh, reasonable uh, negotiation or deal uh, on a budget on a budget deal. And that's what's important. And so that's going to be our focus. Here. Thanks. Um, Speaker McCarthy continues to criticize the President for not meeting with him for 97 days to talk about these issues. Given how close we are to this June 1st deadline with no deal at this point, does the President have any regret for not engaging with McCarthy over that time? We've been very clear, Karen. I appreciate the question, and I, I know what the Speaker has been saying, but we've also been very clear for the past several months of where we are and what's at stake and how important it is for Congress to do their job, to do their job, their constitutional duty. We've been very clear for months and months. Uh, and, uh, and look, the President put his budget out on March 9th. He laid out in a very clear way on how he sees his values, right? We talked about values here in, this, in the President's quote about that, and how he sees the economy moving forward to, uh, to help the American people. We put that out on March 9th for not just Americans to see, but for, uh, for certainly for House Republicans and Congress to see. And so they put out their budget or passed their budget on April 26. And you know, a few days after that, the President started the budget negotiations. And that's what he laid out. That's what he said he was going to do, put out his budget, asked the House Republicans to put their budget. They didn't pass it until April 26. After that, he we started the budget negotiations. And so, again, been very clear about this. And at the same time, holding the line and saying how important it is for Congress to do their jobs, to do their constitutional duty. He started reaching out to federal agencies to see if they can slide any payments uh, in early June, uh, which would effectively allow Treasury Secretary to push back the X date by more time. Has the White House at all been coordinating with Treasury on that? Is that something the White House would want to see, that date move? We're not coordinating with the Treasury Department. That is their, for their, their decision to make. And the last one. Kevin McCarthy's had dozens of gaggles press conferences about this. Is that at all instructive to the president, who has been somewhat media shy, um, in terms of controlling the narrative here around this? I will, uh, I'm, feel strongly by saying this. The president is certainly not media shy. Uh, he would disagree with that, uh, that characterization of him. 